We're seeing a radical collapse of Christian culture in the world today. Humanity is losing its bearings, its direction, because it's walking in the dark. A lot of people aren't seeking God sincerely. God wants to give a gift to the human race through Jesus. In Him there is no darkness. In God alone is light. In God alone is life. He wants to live His life in you and through you and extend it to the whole world. To be Christian means to live by the Spirit, to walk by the Spirit. That's what Christianity is all about, is saving people. Jesus is inside knocking on the door and He wants to come out. He's alive. He continues to save. The Kingdom of God is at hand because the King is on the throne. Hey, welcome to the choices we face again. And you know, sometimes when I, when I go out speaking or when Peter goes out speaking, people say, gee, you're different when you're preaching than when you're in the studio. Well, it, there's a difference, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. Peter. Yeah, all the lights and everything. Yeah, there's nobody yeah. in here but us and yeah, some cameramen. And this is a conversational yeah. format. It's a different way of communicating. Although sometimes we break out. Sometimes a little preaching moment here yeah. or there. And, yeah, but, yeah. but we don't start roaming around the stage <laughs> like, like, yeah. like sometimes. We're jumping been, up and down. Yeah, like sometimes we've been known to do. Anybody? Even when we move our chairs, they don't like it. So we have no, to kind of. No, yeah. they'd like to stay still so we yeah. stay with the lights and everything. Right. So, but anyway. Uh, we uh, taped uh, a talk I did at Franciscan University of Steubenville this last summer, and it's about that topic that we are concerned about, about salvation, about evangelization. So we're going to take a look at uh, part of the talk I gave on this at Franciscan University, and then Peter and I are going to talk about it. But you know what? The popes are saying, Pope John XXIII, Pope Paul VI, Pope John Paul II, Benedict XVI, is that a new Pentecost is for the purpose of a new evangelization. So what are we being given the Holy Spirit for? Well, we're given the Holy Spirit to wake us up to who Jesus is and to fall in love with Jesus and to give our life to Jesus and to be filled with his spirit so we can be his witnesses. You know, first stay in the upper room and you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit and then you'll be my witnesses, like Larry was a witness tonight to the Lord. Now, why is this important? Well, I'm gonna say a few things about it. For one thing is that for the first time in 2,000 years, the Catholic Church devoted a whole document to the mission of lay people at the Second Vatican Council. We finally got our document, yay! Now what does that document say? It's called the Decree on the Apostolate of Lay People. And it starts off in a very interesting way. It says, you don't need to wait to be asked to do something for the Lord. You don't need to wait for your pastor or your bishop or your deacon to ask you to do something in your parish. You've already been asked by Jesus. And he asked you when you became a Christian. He asked you when you were baptized. Because what happened is that he came to dwell in you and that's what he's about. He wants to live his life in you and through you and extend it to the whole world. So you've already been asked. You know, a lot of times people say, well, you know, if somebody would ask me to do something, I suppose I'd do it. You've been asked. Do you hear that? You've been asked. Jesus has asked you to allow him to continue seeking and saving those who are lost through you. Now, it also goes on to say that there's four ways in which us lay people can carry out this mission. I'm going to quickly run through them. First is through the witness of our lives. Just living the Christian life is already a witness. And it's becoming more and more that way. Like sometimes you meet young people today and they say, they're getting married. You say, wow, that's kind of radical. You mean you're not just gonna live together, you're getting married? And you're having a church wedding and you don't mean a, a good setting for photography but you actually wanna have a Christian marriage? Whoa, that's radical. And gasp. 
you're having a baby. <laughs> Whoa, that's radical. And you're having another baby. Whoa, wait, what's going on here? You know, just Christian marriage, just Christian family life is more and more a tremendous witness in the world today to the hope and the faith and the love that comes through being a Christian. Just being honest in business, just telling the truth to our customers, uh, just being honest in finances, uh, just helping our neighbor when they need help. I mean, just being a Christian witness just because we're trying to live a life that's pleasing to the Father is already a part of evangelization. But there's more. Second dimension of our mission as lay people according to Vatican Council. Works of charity and mercy. Just helping people who need help, period whether there's an opportunity to witness to them or not. Just loaning your neighbor the cup of sugar that's needed to complete the recipe. Uh, just mowing your neighbor's lawn, whatever. You know, just, just works of mercy and charity, either by personal charity or through organizations or through financial contributing, like the St. Vincent de Paul Society or uh, like homeless shelters or just all the ways in which basic human needs are being met, either ways in which we can do it personally or supporting organizations or contributing financially. Just feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and visiting the imprisoned and visiting the sick and just mercy, just, just being a human being. But there's more. And these things aren't like piling on top of each other. They all become kind of integrated and you hardly notice them. They're just kind of working together. The third is what the council calls renewing the temporal order, helping to make life in this world go better on a structural level, you might want to say. This is where the pro-life movement would come in. This is where working for political candidates to be elected who are honest and competent and would govern us with some respect for the constitution of our country and God's law. Uh, this is where taking a concern for the environment, taking a concern for educational opportunity, taking a concern for fairness and justice and in, in some of the very sad things that Larry shared that sometimes there's just really injustice that goes on in the structures of our society and just really trying to tra change those things so that it works better for people and more pleasing to God. But the council goes on to say that even though you have these first three dimensions, if you don't have the fourth, you really don't have the fullness of evangelization. What's the fourth? Hold on to your seats. It's talking to other people about Jesus. Now this is a little scary for us Catholics, you know. Sometimes we have this idea of ecumenism, we'll have a division of responsibilities. The Protestants talk to people about Jesus and we do the works of mercy and charity. You know, a nice division of labor. No, 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 it's gotta come together because that's what Jesus said and that's what the church teaches. And lest you think I'm making this up, let me read exactly what the council says in section six and 13 of the decree on the apostle of lay people. This witness of life is not the sole element in the mission of lay people. The true apostle is on the lookout for occasions of announcing Christ by word, either to unbelievers to draw them towards the faith, or to the faithful to instruct them and strengthen them and incite them to a more fervent life. And in section 13 it says, the mission of Catholic lay people must not exclude any good that can be done for people. Genuine apostles are not content, however, with just this. They're earnest also about revealing Christ by word to those around them because it's a fact that many people cannot hear the gospel and come to acknowledge Christ except through the lay people they associate with. You know, we're still suffering from this kind of pass the buck syndrome. Like, well, yes, I know I'm called to be holy, but you know, it's really the priests and nuns who are called to be holy. You know, we're paying them to be holy, you know? Or 
yes, I know I'm called to evangelize, but really, it's really the priests and nuns and deacons. You know, they're, they're supposed to do that, you know? We've got to say yes to the most fundamental and most basic truth about ourselves that a baptized Catholic is called to the fullness of holiness and called to the fullness of participating in the evangelizing mission of Jesus. It's Catholic identity. And one of the things that's happening in the Second Vatican Council is trying to restore clarity to what basic Catholic identity really is. And that's what this, all this talk about new evangelization is. John Paul II coined the phrase, and, and you know, we're used to thinking about primary evangelization as preaching the gospel to people who have never heard the gospel. But then he says there's a need now for a new evangelization directed towards people who maybe culturally are Christian or Catholic or maybe even go to church but don't really understand completely what they're doing and aren't really living this embrace of holiness and evangelization. And so a new evangelization has to be directed to traditionally Catholic people. I mean, there's a lot of folks who are Irish Catholics or German Catholics or Italian Catholics or Hispanic Catholics or Louisiana Catholics who don't have a clue anymore about what it all means. It's become like ethnic identity rather than a personal relationship of love and discipleship to Jesus Christ. And so the popes are calling for a, a new evangelization in which every member of the church would participate reaching out to people who we used to take for granted that they know what it's all about and they don't know what it's about anymore and they need to be called to faith and to conversion. Okay, now, why is this important? Well, the popes give a number of different reasons. One of the things that Pope John Paul II said is he says, we're seeing a radical collapse of Christian culture in the world today. Traditionally, Christian nations are radically becoming secularized, and we, don't you feel it in the air? Don't you feel it? Like, almost like this choking fog is coming in, uh, and it's hostile to Christ, and it's hostile to the church, and there's powers and principalities that are trying to, to crush the church and to silence the church. And, you know, we're not helping ourselves very much, are we? But, you know, that's something the Lord's going to take care of through repentance and, 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 and the humiliation that we're going through. But there's this de-Christianization that's going on. There's a need to, in the face of that, a new bold proclamation that has to be made. made. And, and the popes say it has to be new in ardor or fervor, new in expression, new in methods. We need to be opening to the creativity of the Holy Spirit and finding new ways of communicating about the person of Christ to people in our culture, people in our lives, people in our neighborhoods, people in our families. Another reason the pope gives, he says, all over the world, Catholics are leaving the Catholic Church for evangelical and Pentecostal churches. And, and so many Catholics, when you, when you interview them after they have left, uh, and, and, and sociologists do surveys with them, and they ask, why did you leave the Catholic Church? Almost always, the number one reason is they say, I never heard the gospel preached. Now, this is a little hard for us to understand because the gospel is read every Sunday, but there's a difference between reading the gospel and preaching the gospel, isn't there? There's a difference between giving a somewhat abstract sermon and an appeal to people to give their lives to Jesus Christ and to understand their need to do that and to have it communicated with passion and with clarity and, and with specific personal response. And that's probably what they're talking about. Nobody ever explained it clearly enough and told them that they needed to make a response to it right now. And, and once they did, things really changed in their life. Another thing they'll commonly say is that, well, my kids were getting to be in the teenage years and uh, they were starting to drift away from the church and then somebody in the high school in the young life, you know, evangelical Protestant group invited them to come to a Bible study and they really liked it. And then they got invited to their church and their church had three youth ministers and great music and my kids didn't want to go to the Catholic church anymore. They said it was boring. Oh, ooh, ooh, it's hard to hear that, isn't it? But that's the truth for a lot of people. They don't understand what's going on in the mass. 
It's, it's never been explained to them. They don't understand the personal relationship at the heart of the whole thing. They don't understand the Mass is a proclamation of the Gospel. They, they, they just don't get it, and somebody helped them get who Jesus is in another setting, and so, so, so many parents will say, I'm just thankful my kids aren't in drugs and aren't, you know, sexually addicted and aren't, you know, going down the road to destruction. I'm, I'm glad that these Protestant kids talk to my kids about Jesus. It's hard. But, you know, sometimes as Catholics, we're so much more ready to repair the stained glass windows than hire a youth minister. You know, we're so much more ready to build a social hall than invest in ministry. You know, in my own archdiocese, every year they do a survey what the priorities of, of, of the people of God in the Archdiocese of Detroit are. Number one priority every year is youth. You know what? It's never reflected in the budget. Only 25% of the parishes in the Archdiocese of Detroit have a youth minister. What, what, what's all this talk about the youth being the future of the church if we're not putting our money where our mouth is? You know, so God's shaking us up for a reason. We need to be shook up. Shaking up is good. You know, uh, Peter, you know, people are going to think I only have one shirt. I think I was <laughs> is wearing... Is this the very shirt? Yeah, I was wearing that last <laughs> summer. You know? Looks good on you. It's oh. that Irish green. Looks oh, yeah. good on you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, what did you think? It was very good. I think, what were our four points? Uh, the witness of life, you mm-hmm. said, is part of the, the basic vocation of the Christian who's baptized. You live a life witnessing to the love of Jesus Christ. That means you got to know him. You know, you got to know him, follow up, to, to witness to a reality that's in your life. Mm-hmm. And, if, and if you've encountered him and know him, that witness comes out of that. Then works of charity, renewing the temporal order, and then the mission of proclaiming the gospel. When you said I was reminded of uh, a document I read years ago, and it was related to the laity as well. And one of the cardinals in the document said, you know, a lot of times there's this conflict we have that is not legitimate between the charity of bread that is serving the poor and doing works of justice and charity the truth, our message that we proclaim. He said, there's no conflict there. You can't really have one without the other. But he said, the church leads, or the church, the more important is literally the charity of the truth. Why? Because the church is first sent to deal with the issue of overcoming the powers of sin and death and leading people to eternal life. Mm -hmm. So they say very clearly in church's documents, the first way the church serves humanity yeah. is through the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. If we feed them and clothe them, which we absolutely have to do, if we do that and we don't lead them to Christ, what good have you done? What have you gained exactly? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What does a profit a person to gain the whole world but yeah. suffer the loss of his soul? And the, yeah. the primary core mission of the church is helping people end up in heaven rather than hell yeah. and discovering the mercy that's available in Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. I think you, you, know, you mentioned at the end, you were talking about the lack of investment, of financial investment to stand behind what we say is our primary goal right now is to reach young people. Mm-hmm. I think part of why it's not happening is we are caught in this malaise, Ralph, of a kind of the assumption that's in the broader culture that the big question is already answered. The question of salvation, the question of destiny, it's all been answered already. And so there's not that urgency to say, mm-hmm. we need to get our young people to encounter Jesus, to give their life to Him, to live as disciples. So let's put our money, our resources, and time there. There's, you know what I mean? I think yeah. there's just this assumption that it's already a done deal, yeah. you know, yeah. in some way. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's true sometimes in catechetics, you know, in religious education. You know, people say, well, people just need to be taught these objective truths about the faith yeah. and just assume that they already are believers right. or they already right. committed their life to Christ. And one of the things that the church is waking up to is the fact that it's not enough just to pass on information about Jesus, but somehow we have to yeah. invite people to, to encounter the person of Jesus. Just just a few days ago, Pope Benedict XVI was talking to the bishops from Brazil who were on their ad limina visit, and he said, you know, Brazil is a traditionally Catholic country. You were evangelized, you know, 500 years ago, 400 years ago, uh, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're a Christian culture, but, but things are happening now, it's falling apart, you know, and, and yeah. he says, and, and one of the things that's happening is that people are turning to evangelical and Pentecostal churches. Those are the exact words he used. And he said, this should give us some hope as well as consternation that people are hungry for Christ. Right. And we need to kind of wake up from our sleep and, and help people discover the personal relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ that many don't have, but they just have like Catholic culture yeah. without the relationship. So that's what you see when, when, they, when he says there's some hope there. I mean, he's not happy with the fact that, that they're leaving the Catholic Church, but the hope is 
that they're actually seeking the Lord. They yeah. want more of yeah. the Lord. What are they finding there, Ralph, that they're not finding? I mean, specifically, what are the things they're finding that they're not finding in the Catholic Church? Well, you know, what the Pope said is that what they're finding is a personal encounter with Christ. Yeah. And, and that's sometimes hard for people to, Catholics to understand what you're talking about there. And they say, hey, I go to mass, you know, I, I contribute in the collection, I, you know, you know what, whatever. And, and what people want is not just a way of life, but they want the person that motivates yeah. you to a way right. of life. They, they don't want to just hear about the church and the rules and the commandments and this, that. They want the pearl of great price. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. want to know why somebody would want to do that. And, yeah. and people don't want to do that unless they discover Jesus Christ in their life yeah. who gives them the motivation. Like it's, they need the new law placed within their hearts yeah. where it's not just obligation and burden, but there's a new principle in our life of the Holy Spirit giving us a desire and yeah. giving us a hunger. That's good. You know, we're not, the church is not just proclaiming a message about a social organization. We're a, we're a good group of people doing a lot of good stuff so come and join us in doing our good stuff. That's yeah. not the main message of yeah. the church. I mean, the main right. message of the church is Jesus Christ is risen. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. He's acting in the present. God himself knows me and lives in me. And the most mind-boggling thing is God loves me. Yeah. And my future and my destiny are secure in Christ. My life makes sense to me now. I can live with the kind of freedom and the hope for tomorrow and the, and the full fulfillment of my life. And when that happens, the irony is, Ralph, it spills out into all these other things. Yeah. The teaching, the catechism, the sacraments come alive, and the things you were communicating in your talk, a passion to care for the poor, a passion to have an impact on the culture, and these kinds of things. So if we don't preach the gospel and bring people to encounter Christ, those areas are all going to continue to diminish as well. Yeah, that's really true. When I was sharing about when people leave the Catholic Church for these evangelical and Pentecostal churches and sociologists do interviews with them and say, why did you leave? One of the main things they say is, I, I never heard the gospel preached or I never knew you could have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's hard again for us Catholics to hear because right. we say the gospel is read every Sunday at mass and everything. But I think what they're talking about is very seldom is there a sermon that talks about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and what you what you can do to have that relationship yeah. and actually inviting people to to commit themselves to Jesus yeah. Christ, to, to say a prayer of commitment or yeah. you know repent or turn away yeah. from Sin, you know. and, 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 in a, and an RCI program that actually helps people understand, not just receive the information, but uh, apply it directly to their life and say, okay, what in my life is inconsistent with living under the Lordship yeah. of Jesus yeah. Christ? How I behave, you know, how I speak, how I relate to people, my, uh, my sex life, my money life, my just the real practical down to earth. And this is what happens sometimes in these churches. They take you right there. Yeah. And they say, if you want to make a decision to have Jesus the Lord of your life, You've got to make a break with that stuff. Yeah. You, you can't live in compromise. If you're lukewarm, the faith will have no power. It'll have no life. You'll end up in boredom and everything else. You yeah. need to surrender to Jesus Christ yeah. consciously and personally with your mind and your will yeah. coming under that. You know? Yeah, a, a wishy-washy, lukewarm kind of Catholicism yeah. doesn't satisfy anybody who's in it. It doesn't attract anybody who's not in yeah. it. You know? yeah. And so we're talking about renewal, and this is this is what Vatican II is really about, not just the, uh, you know, power to the lay people, or not just ecumenical dialogue, or not yeah. just setting up parish councils, but what it was about was a renewal of relationship yeah. with the Lord, a renewal of receptivity to the Holy yeah. Spirit, a renewal of really steeping ourselves in the Word of God and following and obeying it, and that's the only kind of renewal that's really going to make a difference in the Church's mission. Yeah, I remember Pope John Paul II saying in his document on evangelization, saying the the church, you know, le proclaims the gospel. It's her first and primary responsibility. And that proclamation that is announcing the person of Jesus and who he is births faith, leads mm -hmm. people to repentance and births faith in the human heart. And he said that faith from the outset, from the beginning, is by intention total and radical. Yeah. I mean, those are his words, yeah. not mine. He said, we're talking about at the initial stage, the intention of that heart is responding to a total and radical call. Yeah. And so the heart is giving back what the call is asking for. Yeah. And he said, so Catholic faith, Christian faith from the beginning is total 
and radical from the outset. Yeah, and it's really interesting, but the popes are on the cutting edge. Yeah. They're not lagging behind. They're, yeah. they're just trying to lead us all into that kind of surrender to Christ yeah. and that openness to the Holy Spirit and that embrace of our baptism that, that really can bring a, a real yeah. revolution in the church. And, you know, and then we're fight here they're calling us to be told and radical, but the broader culture and elements even within the church are always throwing water cold water on that. Yeah. No, no, you don't want to be too serious about this. Are you, you a be fundamentalist? You don't want to be too fanatical yeah, about this. Right, yeah, you, yeah. you know, I mean, religion's causing all the problems in the world anyway, yeah, right? Yeah. It better, better to be Luke. It's almost like it's better to be lukewarm, you know? It's Je safer. Yeah. I mean, Jesus said lukewarmness makes him sick. He's yeah. coming to us totally and radically <laughs> committed to yeah. us and dying yeah. for us and calling for that total response. And we yawn in the face of yeah. it. And he says it makes him sick. But people say, no, no, you just want to get along now. Make yeah. sure that you don't look yeah. too radical, yeah. you know? Well, he said, I've come to cast fire on the earth. And what would I but be ablaze, you know? Yeah. Which leads me to our need for a new Pentecost. Yeah. I've written a new booklet, and we'd like to make it available for you. And what we really need is the Holy Spirit. That's what John the 23rd called for when he called for the Second Vatican Council. He said, pray for a new Pentecost. And this new Pentecost can be personally appropriated by each one of us. So we're going to give you the information about how you can get the booklet. Four popes in a row have now asked us to fervently pray for a new Pentecost. They know that what we need is an outpouring of God's Spirit. I've written a booklet about what this new Pentecost is and how we can personally appropriate more of the Holy Spirit. We'd like to make it available as a gift from us to you. Just call 1-800-282-4789 or go to our website, renewalministries.net. Click on New Booklet and we'll send you your own copy. Come Holy Spirit. You know, this is free. I mean, this could really make a difference in your life. I mean, people who love the work of Renewal Ministries have given us money, so we can give this to you for free. So there's no excuse for you not having more of the Holy Spirit because that's what we all need. I'm so glad you wrote that, Ralph, because you know, remember when Pope Benedict was here a few years ago, like the entire theme of his visit to the United States is, it's time for a new Pentecost. Pray for a new Pentecost. Be ready to come into a new Pentecost. I'm glad yeah. you wrote that. It's yeah. very timely. Yeah. And, and just to bring this all home, Peter, to, to the individual, you know, we're talking about the church needs this, the church needs that, and we need to preach the gospel. And this is addressed to each of us personally. You know, every single one of us is a personal call from the Lord to, to say yes to Him, but also to be a witness to Him. And we should be looking at the people in our life with new eyes and looking at the people in our neighborhood and looking at the people in our work environment saying, uh, how can I help these people move along the path that leads to life rather than the path that leads to death? And praying for them, interceding for them, asking God to give us opportunities where we can be a witness to them, asking God to open doors where we can say a few words to them, maybe giving us an inspiration to invite them to something or share a book with them. But there's so many natural ways in which we can open doors and open conversations that can help people come to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Till next week, this is Ralph Martin and Peter Herbeck wishing the very best, a big yes to Jesus, and a big welcome to the Holy Spirit.